Welcome back to some more AI. Um, sure. I don't know if we can see her actually, or she's just. Who are you? Impossible. How did a jellyfish get in here? Bruh. So shiny too. You utter idiot. It's me. Renju. Do I look like Renju? Suki. It's me. Boss. Is this dude really serious or he's playing stupid? Date, seriously. Then are you mom? Idiot. You must have increased your dosage too much. My dosage? Anyway, you're Iba, right? Why are you here? Looking like that. I just thought I would protect myself. You seem lonely. How are you doing this? I am overlaying the image your left eye processes with augmented reality. Yeah, I can tell you that. You can't see me through your right eye, only your left. You can't just pop into my eyeball without permission. You do realize I do that all the time, right? So, how is that? I mean, how are they related? Unfortunately, I did not find anything in our database that could connect the two. I see. However, I did discover some rumors on the internet. Most of them come across as gossip or conspiracy theories. But would you like to hear them regardless? Yeah, sure. Please. Mr. Sajima currently resides in Azabu. in a mansion, a restored samurai castle. Of course. For 20 years ago, so Sajima lived elsewhere. In the Kawasaki district, to be exact. He lived there until he was 40 years old. The Sajima family owned a vast amount of real estate in the district. Adjusting for inflation, the land was valued above 30 billion yen. The Sajima family sold off its holdings. Six months later, the incident occurred. Explosion at the chemical plant. This caused Kawasaki to become a restricted area. Was the explosion covered up for another explosion? And of course, land prices fell drastically to less than one thirtieth their original value. Hmm. What are your thoughts? The timing is certainly suspicious. To sell that amount of land just six months before it happened. There is another interesting fact. After the accident, Sosajima purchased all of the land back for just one billion yen. So, oh, dude, this is smart. So he's got 29 billion yen in his pocket and one billion yen of land. Correct. Despite the horrific accident, the Sajima family is no worse off. True. But I don't see the point of it. It's not like he got anything out of it. That would be true, but there is more to the <sighs> That meets the I. There is another important fact. After the land prices in the Kawasaki region crashed. Oh, we will have to continue this conversation later. I am receiving a call from headquarters. Is this Special Agent Dante from Abyss? Yeah. My name is Mikasuka from HQ. I'm investigating the Shoko Nadami case. There's something that you need to hear. What's that? What is it? We got a phone call earlier from a prisoner at Fuchu Prison. A prisoner? We saved the call. I think you should give it a listen. Who is this? In here? I've known as number 89. What is this call concerning? I know who killed Shoko Nadami. And if you let me out of here, I will tell you who it is. I suppose you might say I'm looking for a plea bargain. He will kill again. Still alive. There will be more bodies. Do you want to stop this serial killer? I suggest you take my offer. I'll be seeing you. This has to be a prank. Mm. That's what I thought too. However, we got the call yesterday afternoon. Before Renju was killed. In other words, you're saying he predicted the second crime? Yeah, I think he did. That's why I thought I should contact. Good idea. Good luck. 
Do you think there's anything to this? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. Dude, I am numb this. I'm just here. I'm his other eye, so I know as much as you do. No, at first I thought this game would be more fun. Oh, Date. What's wrong? You look like you have a lot on your mind. Yeah, I just found out online. The corpse at Bloom Park. That was Renju's ex-wife, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, it was. So that was Mizuki's mom. Yep, and you just ran off and let her see. Mizuki saw her own mom. Yep. And I just... Yep. I just... But I didn't know. I knew her as Shoko Nadami. Her last name is different. I am Midoriya Mandokura. And I'm gonna be the number one hero. I didn't know that was Mizuki's mother. Okay, now that is 100% Midori. I want to apologize to her. I need to tell her that I'm sorry. The other one is sound. Hey, you're cute. You get asked out a lot, don't you? I don't know why you're sitting here behind a desk. You should be an idol. <laughs> oh, thank you. But despite my looks, I am a bit too old to be an idol. <laughs> she sounds. Never mind. I can get into it now. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I turned 36 this year. You're kidding. <laughs> Where's Iris? She's recording a podcast right now. It's looking at her schedule. It should end soon. Ooh, do you want to get some food sometimes? Oh, that's awfully aggressive. You're an alpha type, aren't you? I kind of like that. What? I like you. Oh, but there is one little thing you should know about me. I'm a reptilian. Huh? Is that going to be a problem? <laughs> what? What's a reptilian? A reptilian humanoid alien. They are said to be shapeshifters that take on human form. Yeah, that is definitely going to be a problem. Oh, too bad. Was she joking about that? No problem. After all, it means we get to see each other again. I'm glad. Doing my normal routine. I don't know your normal routine. I went to a dojin store to look at the new releases. Nice. And I ate some ramen at Juro's and then headed over to the PC cafe to browse threads. You know, normal. If that's normal, I haven't had a normal day in my life. Uh, I don't know anything. I've only seen Renju a couple of times. I didn't think it was possible to be this bad at lying. Though it is plainly obvious, I did a thermal check on Ota's body. This is his current body temperature. That's what I thought. Have you forgotten, Ota? You're my thrall. You don't want me to tell Iris your secret, do you? Huh? Well, wait, it's no big deal, I just... You better start talking. Okay. <laughs> okay. Last night I was walking over to Sunfish Pocket and I saw Renju come out of the building. Was he alone? Someone was with him. 
ね。Um. Okay, look. I can tell you're trying to protect her, but you have to help me out here. Was it Iris? N no, it definitely for sure wasn't Tessa. What? Got it. So Renju was with Iris. Okay, fine. There's no point in hiding it, I guess. You're right. Renju came out of the building with Tessa. Tessa has nothing to do with this. She wouldn't murder anyone. She wouldn't hurt a fly. She's an idol. Idols don't kill people. We need to stop putting her on a pedestal. Tessa is a savior to me. The Tessa I know wouldn't hurt anyone. <laughs> Mizuki didn't seem like she was angry with you. What? You met Mizuki? Oh, at the interrogation. That's right. He doesn't know I live with Mizuki. I have no reason to hide it, but. Sort of hard to explain. Yeah, I spoke to Mizuki at her um, questioning earlier. You're sick, Date. What? Questioning? That sounds dirty. If I were writing a light novel, that's exactly how I would describe a sexy scene. What? What kind of novels are you writing, kid? A savior. The first time I met her, I had a bad case of writer's block. And I saw all this awful negativity online, and I lost sight of what I really wanted to write. It was the lowest point of my life. He is talking like a professional, though he hasn't published anything. Yeah. Then, by pure chance, I found a video of Tessa singing and dancing, and it made me realize something important. You don't have to care what people think, you know? If you do your best at what you believe in, your message will get through to people. That attitude is something all great creators need to have. After that, I became a huge ASET fan and got over my writer's block. Hey. And I know I'm not the only one Tessa has inspired. A lot of otaku like me say that Tessa is their savior. She cheers them up when they're down. So there's no way Tessa can be involved in murder. Absolutely impossible. Well, we'll just find that out together. But do you suspect her? I need to hear her side of the story. If I do, I might find out she's totally innocent. If you truly believe that she didn't do it, you should tell me everything you know. What? Do it for Iris. Around 6.15, I guess. Where did they go? I didn't see. They got into Renju's car and drove off. And what did you do? I went inside Sunfish Pocket, but I saw a sign that said the entire club was reserved. I figured I would just go home. What happened? Date. What's good? There's something I need to ask you. Come with me. Okay. So, <laughs> Iris, I'm going to ask you some questions. Please answer honestly. However, you do not have to say anything that might incriminate you. The right to remain silent? You're treating me like a criminal. Not exactly. I'm just looking for the truth, and I would appreciate your cooperation. Do you have an alibi for last night? What were you doing from 7 to 9 last night? I was at home the whole time. You're sure? Yes. Iva, thermograph. There is no noticeable rise in Iris's body temperature. She isn't lying. Not necessarily. I will say, how does that? We must consider the possibility that she is a natural liar. Ooh. With that kind of confidence, her temperature wouldn't change. <clears throat> Correct. 
Anju's estimated time of death was 8 p.m. last night. If Iris' story is true, she couldn't have died. There is another possibility. Even if Iris was at home, she could have killed Renju. How? You mean... Can I ask your mother about your alibi? I'll ask again. You are sure you were at home around 8 p.m. yesterday? Yes. Can I ask your mother about your alibi? You can, but there'd be no point. Why is that? My mom was at home. <laughs> Ooh. Nope. She came back home early this morning. <clears throat> this morning? Yeah. Where was she? I don't know. You don't know. Come to think of it, Iris's mom had connections to Renju too. Hitomi did mention that yesterday. Renju was my classmate at Eitoku High. We've known each other for 20 years now. However, we have nothing to link her to the case. That's true. But I am curious. What was Hitomi doing last night? Okay. Is Ato's story true? Here's what Ota told me. Ota. Yesterday around 6.15 <laughs> You and Renju came out of the Sunfish Pocket Building. Is that true? Yes. Mr. Okira called me and told me he wanted me to come to Sunfish Pocket ASAP. Around what time was that? 5 p.m., I think. I got ready, then headed over there. I guess I got there about an hour later. Date, I checked her call history. At 4.58 p.m., there is a record of a call to Iris from Renju's phone. Okay. What were you doing with what him? Doing with Renju? He asked me about a job. What kind of job? He rented out Sunfish Pocket for a party and he wanted me to MC. He said that it was an important party and that a lot of big shots were going to be there. But the girl he asked to do it originally got sick and couldn't come. Hmm. But I turned him down. Why? Because I'm just an internet idol. I've never done any MCing before. Especially with important people being there. What did you do after you turned him down? What did you do after you turned him down? I left with Mr. Okira at 6.15 p.m. That must have been when Ota saw me. And after that? I asked Mr. Okira to take me home in his car. I got home at 7 p.m. I was home the rest of the night. What do you think, Iva? I cannot detect any contradictions. However, her story appears almost too organized. Human memory is ambiguous. Her use of exact times leads me to be suspicious. Yeah, that's true. Mm. When did you find out Renju was killed? This morning, on the news. And you were with Renju last night? You didn't think to call the police and inform them of this? Oh, sorry. Is that something you're supposed to do? Yeah. I had a podcast to record this morning, so if I went to the police, I'd be late. And that would cause everyone a lot of trouble, you know? I heard you used to work at Sunfish Pocket. That's right. How long? A little over a year. Working there that long, you're probably pretty familiar with the equipment. Yeah, I guess. What about the surveillance camera? Do you know where those tapes were stored? What are you trying to say? You know... All you have to do is put her in that brain thing and scour yes. her memory. Yeah, yeah you are. It's not like that. It's fine, Date. It's true that I met with Mr. Okiora yesterday, but... How do I put this? It's impossible that I'm the killer. Why? I'm a teenage girl. So? Mr. Okiura is a fully grown man. Well, she's got a point. A girl like her could have stabbed, poisoned, or shot him dead, but... No, it's still possible. You see. <laughs> okay, here we go. Because... The 
oil drum inside Sunfish Pocket. The type that has a lid you can open, with about a 200 liter capacity. Empty, it weighs approximately 44 pounds. I know this watch. It's Renju's favorite. I yeah. It inside an oil drum at Sunfish Pocket. That means... Which didn't she weigh a hundred and like four pounds? A hundred and three. He determined that Renju vacated his bowels from muscle relaxation upon death. However, no trace of this was found on the corpse or at the scene. This means that it is highly likely Renju was killed elsewhere and moved to where he was found. Oh, so this one. Renju's estimated TOD is yesterday around 8 p.m. Numerous hemorrhages in the blood vessels of the throat and face indicate strangulation. The weapon used to commit the murder was some kind of twisted claw. The criminal likely wrapped it around Renju's neck and pulled. Renju then suffocated. The more precise cause of death is cerebral circulation failure due to vessel closure in the neck. In short, Renju was strangled from behind with some kind of cloth or rope. Okay, so the virus could have choked Renju to death. That's true. If you are searching for proof of this, you will not find it here. Hmm. Renju's corpse was discovered at the maid cafe Sunfish Pocket, hanging from a beam on the ceiling by a wire. He was found over the counter. The wire was attached on both ends. One end was attached to a hook that was embedded inside Renju's jaw. The kegs hold approximately 20 liters of liquid. They weigh approximately 55 pounds each. Uh. The autopsy discovered a high concentration of benzodiazepine in Renju's body. This drug is commonly used as a sedative. It is likely that Renju was in a state of compromised consciousness before his death. A heavy concentration of sedatives were discovered in Renju's body. Renju was practically in a coma before he died. He wouldn't have struggled. So, Iris could have strangled him. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Even if I was somehow able to kill him, the rest of it is impossible. The rest of it? Like hanging up his body? How do you know that? What do you mean? It's all over the news. That's true. Renju weighed about 160 pounds. Even if she used her entire body weight, I don't think she could have hauled him up. Right. It would be hard for her to do it with her strength alone. But with a little ingenuity, it could be done. Ingenuity? Yeah. Um, was it? Which one was it? It went like this. First, Renju was laid out on the counter. Next, the wire was thrown over the beam and connected to the hook in its jaw. Then all you need to do is put the three beer kegs on the counter. You think a teenage girl could have done that? I'm sure it was hard. The kegs weighed 55 pounds each. So that's not impossible. I guess it is Even impossible. for a girl. After that, you get on top of the counter, hook the other end of the wires to the kegs, and then, what do you think happens if you kick the kegs off the counter? The three kegs weighed 165 pounds altogether. Renju weighs five pounds less. Hmm. I guess that would make it possible. But... But there is one more thing. What? Considering the state of the crime scene, it's clear Renju was killed elsewhere and brought to where we found him. If Iris is the culprit, how did she move the body? Hey! I know, I know. 
You're going to say you couldn't have moved a 160 pound body. Unfortunately for her, she could have. How? The kegs. That's where his body thing was. You know what this is? It's Renju's favorite watch. This was discovered inside an empty oil drum at Sunfish Pocket. Hey, Date, I know you're on a roll right now, but could you please report things like that according to protocol? What are you trying to say? I'm saying it wouldn't be so hard to move a body if it were in a cylinder. You would just have to roll it. So you're saying Renju's body was moved inside the drum, which is how the watch came off. Mm-hmm. But the suspect didn't notice it. I'm not saying anything for sure. Just pointing out that it's possible. I didn't do it! You don't even have any witnesses! If I were rolling an oil drum in the middle of the street, people would have noticed! You could have put it in a car and driven it. I don't have a license! Doesn't mean you can't drive. Even That's true. I can drive nowadays. Are you mocking me? Don't make sudden outbursts like that. You insulted me! Just be quiet. Um, who are you talking to? What now? Anyway, Iris, you weigh about 105 pounds, right? W where is this coming from? If only you weighed more, or less. That is none of your business. No, I mean that your weight is relevant to the case. If the oil drum was used to transport the corpse, then the possibility of the suspect being around 105 pounds is extremely likely. The elevator. Why did you say that? The elevator. Iris. On which floor is Sunfish Pocket located? On the second floor. That's right. So, I checked the elevator records. Before the corpse was discovered, the elevator only stopped at the second floor once, at 8.55 p.m. And we discovered that the total cargo weight on the elevator was about 310 pounds. Renju weighed 160. The oil drum weighs 44. Together, that's about 205. Subtracting that from 310... This doesn't look good. Now, this obviously doesn't prove you're the murderer. A lot of people weigh 105 pounds. I don't know, man. Or someone could have put 105 extra pounds in the elevator, sent it up, and taken the stairs to throw us off the trail. However... Dante, stop. Iris is acting strange. Don't turn around. Why not? Just stay put. Keep your eyes on the wall. There are several cameras in this room. Two surveillance cameras installed at the corners of the What? And I have each to gain access to their recordings. Look at this. What is that? Ah, shit. Iris, what are you thinking? What is that thing? I can't read it that fast. She's definitely hiding something, Date. Sync with her. Iris is experiencing remnants. Indication is working perfectly. 
Okay, see, we should, all this would have done this in the first place. How about it, Tate? Think you can do it? Not a problem. Get it started. The time limit is six minutes. Yeah, yeah, I know. More time is up. I know. Then, let's begin. Okay. See, that's what I thought the game was mostly gonna be like. I finally got there. We're in high school or school. I have no idea. What is this place? But, um, no, I'm gonna keep on going until I actually start moving. How is this related to Iris? Unknown, but there must be a connection. Iris, what are you hiding? Somnium scan, activate. Okay, whatever that is. Mental lock one. Mental lock two. Mental lock three. Mental lock four. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it and I will see you in the next video.